morning guys it's thursday november the 9th uh we're headed over to change out that amana condenser that's sitting about 30 foot away from the house now for those of you that are that are in the hvac after dark facebook group y'all seen the pictures y'all know which ones i'm talking about for those of you that are not in the group you'll see when we get there a lot of you don't follow the podcast or the group, so, and that's fine. But yeah, for those of you that don't know, this unit is sitting about 30, 35 feet away from the house. Uh, the guy that lives there is not the one that did it. He bought the house like this. Uh, the indoor equipment's been replaced. When he purchased the house, uh, he the, the previous homeowner replaced the furnace and the coil, but not the condenser. It's an old Amana condenser. And so we're gonna swap out the condenser because the evaporator is made for 410A. It's only a couple years old and it's a brand new gas furnace as well. So we're gonna swap out the condenser and uh, we're gonna, obviously we're gonna move it, you know, close, you know, closer to the house where it belongs. Put a disconnect box, a whip, all that good stuff. And, uh, and that'll be it. So, We'll see you guys uh, when we get to the job site. All right, guys. Well, we're here at the house, and there you can see you can see the line set going up the wall, but there's no condenser. That's because the condenser is sitting way over there. There she is. I didn't take a tape measure or anything out, but it's a hell of a good ways away. The electrical is stubbing up over there too, but the problem is there's no electrical over here. I thought it was, but I found it. You go around over here. That's the disconnect box for the condenser. And it goes underground, comes around, and then goes over to the condenser, which is behind that trash pile. So that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to call my electrician buddy of mine that is a licensed electrician, has his own business, and get him to come out here. And he'll have to either cut it and follow the wall or go up in the attic. I really don't care what he does, but he's gonna have to get me power over here. So I'm going to call him and have him come look at this and see how he wants to do this. But I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my copper and uh, I can go ahead and set the condenser, braze it in, vacuum it, all that good stuff. Guys, this is my help this morning. What do you say there, piggy? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, come here. I ain't going to hurt you. Come on. Come on. I ain't going to hurt you. Uh-huh. You better not bite me. Ah, you better not bite me. Welcome to Louisiana, boys. All right, guys, I got my line set cut loose. You can see the old one down there. I will uh, get a hammer, finish smashing that down. I was able to smash the inch and an eighth down uh, below the slab. So I'll just take a hammer and finish smashing that down so I don't tear my hands up. I'll put a uh, inch and an eighth to seven eighths reducing fitting here. And this is half inch because of that damn condenser sitting way out there. But I, I, I talked to, the, uh, to my uh, tech support slash sales rep guy and he said I'll be okay since this is a five ton. Um, but I... Zoom lock does make a half to, to three eighths, but I don't have one and they don't stock them here. So I'm just going to braze this unit in. So I'll put a uh, seven eighths to inch and an eighth and, a, and then I'll actually use my swager and make up my own fitting for this. I can make that myself because I don't carry these in copper fittings either. But I do carry the uh, inch and an eighth by seven eighths. All right, so I'm waiting on my supply house to get here with my equipment and then I will get started. All right, guys, 
got it all brazed in. <clears throat> we tie it in with the inch and an eighth by seven eighths fitting here. Nice little swoop right into the valve. I didn't even have to swedge anything. If you take three eighths and put it right in half inch, it makes a nice tight fit. Came out nice. Right into the dryer, right into the valve. Pipe work came out good. I, <clears throat> I've had compliments about how good my pipe work looks and I appreciate those comments because I do take a lot of pride in my pipe work. I always try to uh, make my pipe work look as neat and clean as possible. And I think it came out pretty good. Leave the control cover on. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to start a vacuum. Uh, electrician's going to be here tomorrow. I think what he's going to do is he's going to wrap around the side of the house and just follow the house with conduit if the customer's okay with that. I'll ask him. He, I don't think he'll care. He'll wrap around the side of that house, come all the way down with conduit, put my disconnect up here, and then whip right into it. And that'll be all she wrote. But we're going to start a vacuum. All right, guys, I have my vacuum pump warming up. Basically, what I want to talk about is, is different vacuum applications, different vacuum setups. Normally, the way I, do, I used to do it was with two 3 8 hoses, one on each side. And I would use core tools so that I could valve off, but I would use these ball valves so I wouldn't have to take my Schraders out. Well, for the past few months, I've been using one hose, one half-inch hose. And I use a core tool with a ball valve to keep the Schrader in, but it's really slow going. It does a good job, it pulls it down, but it's really slow going. Well, I'm, what I've done today is I've, I've, I've put the core back in here because I have a depressor and that, that won't hurt anything. But I have left the core out of my suction. And you can see it right there in my cap. And you can also see that I'm not using a ball valve. So I'm gonna see if that'll speed up the one hose process. I like the one hose process because it's easier to set up, but I have not been happy with the speed performance of it. And it may be due to because of a Schrader. I, I mean, I don't think it's gonna be a whole lot faster. I hope it is, but we're about to find out. If it is a lot faster, I'll start doing it this way. If it's not, I'm gonna go back to my 238 hose setup because it was much faster than the one hose unless this just completely speeds it up so uh with that being said let's uh we got our micron gauge turned on let's see it right there let me tighten it up okay here's the micron gauge let's turn the one on here and then turn the core tool on oh i, I Sounds pretty good. It might actually be faster. All right, guys. Let's see how long it takes. All right, guys. We are under a thousand microns in less less than five minutes. I didn't time it, but I do know less than five minutes. So taking the core out on a one hose application does make a big difference. With the, th with the double 3 8 hoses, it didn't really make a big difference, but with a one hose, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you can just see how fast it's dropping. Normally, if I'd have left the core in, it would have took much, much, much longer than this with a one hose. So, I like the one hose setup. I'll continue to do it this way. We're down in the 700s already and dropping fast. So, we'll let the vacuum pull. It shouldn't take but about another two minutes and we'll probably be down into two to three hundreds and then we'll valve it off and if it holds we'll cut the gas loose and then we'll come back tomorrow when the electrician's done all right guys it did take but a couple more minutes and we're down to 314 and still dropping i'm happy with that we're gonna valve off and see how she holds let's see let's let it get down to 300. All right, 300 microns and dropping. Let's valve it. Holding solid.
That's a tight system right there, boys. Guys, I've had this thing valved off for a good 15, 20 minutes. That's a tight system to me. I'm happy with it, so we're, we're done. I'm gonna clean up my stuff uh, and get out of here, and I'm tomorrow, I'll cut that old thing loose. Uh, I'll just cut the copper stuff with the Sawzall and get it out of his way. But that's it, I'm gonna let the gas loose, put my Schrader back in, and I'm gonna get out of here for the day. And we'll come back tomorrow and start this thing up when the electrician is done. All right, guys, that'll be the finished product. Armaflex on the suction line. There's the disconnect and the whip for the electrician. So this is the finished product except for the electrical. But we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. And I'll get you guys some shots tomorrow when I come back and the disconnect's done and we fire it up and all that. But other than that, it's done. Evacuated. Gas is cut loose. Uh, the low voltage wire. I think it's inside. You can see... Let's take a walk over here. Pretty sure that it's uh, inside with, yep, there's the low voltage wire right there. Okay, that's good. So that means it'll be in a disconnect. He can just tie it all. He can bundle it all in together and then we'll go from there. But yeah, there she is. The old Amana got smashed up by that tree right there. So basically tomorrow what I'll do is I'll take my saws all and just start cutting and I'll just snip this, the power's off, snip that loose, cut those dryers out for him. That way he can stomp that down and bury it in the ground. And he can pick that slab up out the middle of his yard. So that's it. All right guys, thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all on the next one. Sporlin, creating products that provide solutions so that your air conditioning and refrigeration needs are not only met, but exceeded. Offer the highest quality products, innovative solutions, and unparalleled support in the market.